Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today is Monday, therefore I will be working in my sketchbook for today's session. But today's format is going to be slightly different from before as I kind of combine two different sessions into one video when initially I was going to split them up to be two separate sketchbook doodles videos. But I feel like they kind of relate to each other a little bit more so I didn't really want to split up the footages to be for separate weeks. So basically, I've been kind of planning and wanting to do more gouache painting but I wanted to kind of approach it a little bit differently to how I usually do it so I wanted to do basically three studies which will be on the left side and then on the right side of my sketchbook I'll do kind of like a smaller version of a painting that I kind of wanted to do but then after that that kind of feels like another kind of like curiosity that I had but it didn't really pan out the way that I was planning it to so that'll probably be for the last half of the video so probably if you saw the thumbnail for today's video the thumbnail will be the second half's illustration rather than the kind of first portion where it's majority going to be me doing a little bit of gouache painting study alongside with just another gouache attempt before we get into that watercoloring session so previously when I've done illustrations with gouache. I'm not like super confident with my gouache application in general, nor am I super confident with color mixing with gouache because it's such an opaque medium and I feel like the consistency kind of matters depending on what step you're doing for the painting. And I'm not too sure if it's also just me being a little bit more finicky with the paper more recently because I've done several gouache painting in this type of sketchbook where it has like entirely more smoother paper so a lot of the time the water does not adhere very well to the sketchbook so oftentimes what you're going to be seeing me do right now and probably for the next little study I will be doing a kind of like a wash of watercolor first to kind of help prime the paper a little bit and allow it to have a little bit more tooth for the gouache to kind of sit upon but I also kind of use this as a crutch because I have a much easier time kind of mixing colors and planning the colors for my pieces in watercolor just because I use watercolors a lot more often especially like a few years ago but with the first kind of study that I did with the gouache for today's session, I decided that I would do everything entirely with gouache without planning with watercolor. Now, I know people do this often and it probably is more well suited to when you're starting off with your gouache piece to do light washes with gouache, but I found it that I kind of struggled a little bit more, so I'm going to go back and kind of get more used to using gouache once again but I'm still going to be using watercolor as the base to kind of help me guide my color placement alongside with just priming the paper a little bit more and I feel like at least for foliage and some I guess like the way how you can section out gouache into kind of like chunks before you get into detail I feel like it makes a little bit more sense once I work on the next study because I am able to use both watercolor and gouache I think together in a way that makes more sense to my brain and I feel like it makes it also a little bit easier for me to mix the colors that I want for my piece when I have a little bit more of a color guide in my brain and the watercolor kind of provides that for me because like I said I'm a little bit more confident with mixing colors and just in general with watercolor so I definitely still need that crutch for a little bit until I get more confidence with using gouache. So the studies that are on the left side of the page are more of like I think like foliage and flowers that I found on Pinterest then this one is just going to be coming off from my brain of a drawing or painting that I wanted to do with Maseki. Very simple with kind of like a white bouquet of flowers. I wanted him to have more or less like a white shirt and just be embedded or surrounded by like foliage and kind of more of a green and yellow atmosphere. So it just kind of allows me to have a space to just play around with uh, the shapes alongside with the color a little bit without having too much pressure. Because I've done several pieces in the past where my main goal is that I want to be able to paint foliage a little bit more 
and I think I have more of that understanding with the next study, more so than this attempt. But I'll keep on practicing with doing more and more of those in the future. But I will also like to still do a lot more watercoloring because that's still like my favorite medium to work with probably. But if I can use them together somehow a little bit more effectively, then I think there's a lot of potential with the kind of illustrations I could potentially make in the future if I am able to kind of play around with the transparency and the vibrancy of watercolor with more of its uh, layering up aspect of kind of like sheer layers and the kind of like contrasting look a little bit with the opaqueness and kind of that flat matte look with gouache so it'll be kind of fun to play around with both of them together maybe for an illustration in the future but for now I'm going to keep them separate besides using watercolor to help me get a better grip on using gouache. So I think one thing for me for sure, I definitely have a hard time grasping, kind of like mixing my paints a little bit in terms of consistency. So getting whether or not you want more transparency by adding more water, or if you want more of an opaque look by making it have more pigment and kind of like that thicker paint so that it becomes a lot more opaque and you can kind of like layer up a bunch of different colors that way and for the most part I primarily work pretty thick with my paint for gouache to kind of like knock out a lot of the texture of the paper or whatever was like underneath to cover it up and I do like that aspect of gouache but I feel like I am missing out whenever I don't do a lot of like glazes or I could be doing just more sheer layers before we build up to more of an opaque kind of consistency or opaque kind of look to the gouache so I, it's still something I'm gonna struggle with probably for a while and I feel like it's also because the way how I want things to look maybe is not akin to how I want to paint with gouache or what I've seen people paint with gouache so I kind of have to do a little bit more experimentation but I think the studies will definitely help me kind of break out of that limitation because I feel like whenever I work with gouache I become more and more of a coward of using it so I, I think that becomes more prevalent when I actually get to the second or not the second or no, I guess it is the second half of the video, but it's going to be like the fourth piece that we're going to be tackling for today's little, uh, I guess like painting session for today's video. So moving on to the fourth piece, which is technically my third study, because the Masaki one I wouldn't really consider a study, but this one I would consider it a little bit more like a study. So all three of these little paintings on the left side, I did sketch out using Pinterest and I kind of regret the fact that I didn't leave the reference with myself when I was painting them. I kind of just exited out, got some forms and decided to figure out the lighting and stuff by myself instead of trying to treat it more like a study where you can try to color match and get the values and the shapes more correct. But I think I got a little bit better of an understanding of how to use gouache and my watercolors together in a nice way because for some reason I feel like my color accuracy of mixing colors was a lot more accurate when I placed down the watercolors. So you can see the green that I mixed up is actually fairly close to the green that I had initially for my wash of watercolor and as we move along for my mid-tones and my darker colors I tried my best to match the colors as close as possible just because the gouache or not the gouache, the watercolor colors were actually the colors that I think would have fit nicely for the piece. So, so when I started to do the watercolor initially, I did try my best to actually plan out some of the areas where I wanted it to be kind of more deeper and darker foliage, and that will help me get a better sense of the shape initially. And then that way, when I'm working with the gouache, I'm not too lost when I'm adding in more of those like little pieces of leaves and foliage and just like the general shape of it. So I'm not too intimidated by adding paint in certain areas without making it look too messy. So I'm trying my best to kind of like shape and bunch them up into groups if I can instead of... Or how am I going to explain this? I guess like I'm trying to separate them into groups so that I'm laying color side by side. And then as we get into more detail, then I will let things overlap and make my paints a little bit more opaque. And that way we can kind of like meld it together. 
because I always struggle with the fact that sometimes I want to blend with the paint with the paint that's already on my page and kind of just like mix on the go versus like painting things side by side and then after that as we get more detail I'll fill in those gaps a little bit more to make it look the way that I want it to look and I feel like that helps more when you want that more painterly look anyways so I think for the most part that particular study the one that I did last I guess I think worked out the best in terms of how I want to approach things in the future the other two I definitely struggled with especially with the clover and the white flowered ones but for the most part I've learned something from each of them so it's kind of nice to do more studies like this and in the future I'll try my best to find references that I would like to use I definitely have some flowers and stuff that I had from my Japan trip a couple of years ago so I'll probably dig back to those and see what I can use for future sessions and maybe we can use those for references to paint from but let's move on to the next session, which is going to be the watercolor painting. So I'm using a utility blade or X-Acto knife, whatever you want to call this, to basically release the kind of like current painting that I had from a while ago from this watercolor block. I might revisit this one in the future. Maybe I can paint it with gouache, but for the most part, I want a fresh new start. So I'm going to go ahead and release that from the block and we have a new blank page for me to work on. So usually I don't film my sketching process that often. I've been trying to do it a little bit more, but this is kind of the reason why I tend to lift up my paper or my sketchbook or whatever I'm using at an angle like this and I start to sketch so usually it's not ideal for me when I'm actually doing like recording just because I do need it propped up otherwise I will <laughs> skew the proportions really poorly so I feel like the proportions are still a little bit funky I think I gave him a little bit more smaller shoulders because initially I was going to have him turned a little bit more so hopefully it doesn't look too too tiny but I am drawing my OC Kaisen and I had kind of like planned out for him to be holding a bouquet standing next to a wall with a bunch of foliage which I decided that I would do wisterias so you can kind of see a little bit of my iPad in the very background the little kind of minty gray bluish case in the back and that's because I had my references on Pinterest so I'll put them on the screen so you can see what I was referencing in terms of what I kind of put together for the illustration for today and some I used for the I think just like the wall and potentially the color for the shadows one for the pose and a little bit the foliage of what he's holding and then one for the wisterias so this is kind of what we have for the sketch I used the pilot color Eno to sketch it initially then I went ahead and used the I think the uni nano dia lead in the color red just because it doesn't dissolve with water to do his face just in case i accidentally add too much water to kind of dilute my entire sketch and kind of let it all disappear with the touch of water so usually whenever i do larger watercolor pieces granted that this one's only 8 by 10 so it's not big or like I guess like not super large in terms of what I've worked in the past but I tend to like to plan everything very meticulously in terms of keeping lines and shape and making sure that things kind of are contained in its own space but for this one I kind of kept things a little bit looser and I didn't mind if things were not well defined at first so for the most part at least when I was working with gouache as well I was trying my best to block out things and make sure that they were kind of like general to specific but I kind of get the gist of the coloring so the background is still kept very loose and once we start to kind of like build up more and more layers I'll add more shadows I'll fix up the shapes and make them a little bit sharper I will also try to intensify the values alongside with the color where I think is necessary but I think this is a good way for me to also just kind of reimagine the lighting for this piece for what I exactly I wanted to have for it because usually when I sketch I don't plan out a lot for the values or the lighting situation per se so I feel like that's a little bit easier when I work digitally or if I'm working with like an actual proper thumbnail but usually when I sketch kind of on a whim and I didn't really have too much of a plan in terms of putting together the illustration sometimes I don't really consider the lighting so when I was doing this piece I made the lighting come from the upper right hand corner and 
It kind of helps when I added my initial wash and then right now I'm doing kind of the initial wash of a lot of the shadows. I'm also laying in some of that brick or stone wall texture by adding kind of like where the crevices are. So we're slowly defining things as we build up more and more layers. But for the most part, I haven't had this much fun painting a watercolor piece in a while. And I don't know if it's because I wasn't following something so like constraining like I did before where I feel like I have to make sure things are in the right area or things that can't like bleed through and make a mess. So I do think it kind of helps to be a little bit looser. I guess like to some people, even this probably isn't really loose. It probably seems still very contained, but it's a little bit more loose for me at least because I'm letting things bleed and hopefully playing around with the colors a little bit more like more than usual compared to like where I would add certain layers and like slowly layer up in a different way but I'm letting a lot of the colors kind of mingle together to achieve the lighting that I want and I think it turned out really pretty in the very end so I'm quite happy about it. I do not like how I drew his face or at least rendered it with the paint so there's that. Also, hopefully in the future, other than Masaki, I probably will be drawing Kaisen a lot more for illustrations as well because he's kind of the reason why- or not he's the reason, I, it's kind of the reason why I even made him a character that's like associated with plants as well is because I wanted a darker haired character and probably like darker attire or a darker color palette in general to be associated with plants just because I tend to draw Masaki in more like either warmer or airier concepts, but I do feel like sometimes I lack that contrast and kind of playing around with Kaisen's kind of more neutral color palette because his is mostly, I guess you consider like just straight up black. So it'll be easy for me to adjust his color palette nicely to other colors without having to fudge around and kind of find out, oh, if I do, like, if I do want to use Masaki's color palette, this teal work in this situation? Do I need to mute it? Do I need to, like, alter it? But sometimes I feel like that paralyzes me a little bit, so having Kaisen be a little bit more of a simple design will help me at least try out different potential pieces I want to do in the future. So even this one in general, it's probably a concept that would have fit Masaki quite well, but I do like playing around with a lot of the kind of yellowy greens or like olive color or like that mustardy yellow that I have for kind of like the lighting situation alongside with a lot of the black fabric that he has on him. So it's just, it's fun to, I don't know, just change things up slightly every so often, especially because like I've missed painting with watercolor so much and I feel like I say it always so often but I do want to paint more with watercolors just more often this year for sure and at least like when I was doing this session it just made me realize how much I missed it but back to the painting so you can kind of see the wall come to life a little bit because I'm slowly adding a little bit more of that depth and a little bit more of that more refined darker lines or like to the creases and the crevices of like the stones and bricks. I could have went a little bit more. I definitely like the right side more than the left side, but my initial thought was that I was going to keep the left side a little bit more, I guess like less defined because it was supposed to be in shadow, but I get a little bit carried away and I still do the same intensity of the darkness in value for the creases and the crevices on the left side that I did to the right side. So it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it, but I definitely think they turned out a little bit more flat compared to the ones on the left. And even though, or not the left, the right ones. The ones on the right have a little bit better sense of depth. There is some of the little stones that lack it and I feel like I could have added more detail, but I don't think it's necessary since I want Kaisen to kind of be the forefront of the illustration anyways. So yeah, in terms of, hmm, I'm kind of trying to remember a bit more of the process. So initially, I was gonna make the Wisterius to be kind of more airy and kind of more floating in front of Kaisen, but I feel like the way how I have the shadows placed and how he's placed against the wall, it feels like it's just very flat and very close. So I don't really, I don't think I adjust it too much and I did have a bit of trouble figuring out how I wanted to approach even 
adding more details to the wisterias because even though I love wisterias, like the purple, the pink, the white ones, any of them, they're super pretty in clusters and it was kind of like one of the things I really wanted to see when I was in Japan because there is like a wisteria garden tunnel but it's so far away that we didn't end up going but one day when I return back to Japan for a vacation or something or a trip I definitely want to make a stop there and take photos and everything because it's so pretty if I can find a photo of it, I'll put it on the screen but the amount of flowers and just like foliage that wisteria flowers just have is a lot and they kind of like if you've never seen them before basically they're like a cluster of flowers that hang downwards into almost like a, a point so i didn't want to individually paint all the flowers even though i've done it before and it's really painstakingly tedious to do but also very unnecessary so for the most part once we start working on the wisterias i'm going to try my best to block in more shadows and more of the form that i can for the flowers alongside with adding more of the leaves so i definitely think because i rendered the wisterias a little bit later and last and the fact that they were white i kind of got confused on where i placed certain shadows versus what was supposed to be the shadow for the wisteria instead of what was supposed to be against the wall so i definitely think there is some parts of the flowers that look a little bit off i don't think these leaves fit it either i definitely haphazardly placed them in because i didn't want to find a new reference for this piece just because i already blocked it in in such a weird way that i didn't really want to adjust it now if i was working Oh, I totally forgot about this actually. So the reason why I'm even doing this piece. So initially I was planning on painting gouache on this piece and I wanted to try out whether or not it kind of affected my perception of using kind of like lighter, more transparent washes on watercolor paper rather than on smooth textured paper that's not meant for painting. But because I like my initial washes with watercolor so much, I did not want to cover them up with gouache because I am a coward and I didn't want to ruin it. So I decided that I would proceed the entire piece with watercolor instead. I definitely will tackle one with gouache in the future and I think I will do that. I was gonna say for next week's session, but I can't even guarantee that because I might be a little bit burnt out from painting, but we'll see because I kind of just want to do another watercolor painting as well. well. We'll see what I end up doing and hopefully I will tackle a gouache piece on this paper because I want to do a test on hot press paper rather than cold press because I believe I've done cold press before and it I did not really like the result but I think it's also because I didn't really like how I painted the character's face at the time. So back to the piece and enough about uh, kind of me being a coward of using gouache for this piece. So I feel like if I was using gouache though, I could have probably pulled out more of those flowers from the wisterias. But let's move on to a close-up of his face, just a smidge, because I, for some reason, did his face last and I almost never do the face last just because it tends to be the part of the piece that makes or breaks it for me so usually if i don't like the face i will abandon the piece immediately and restart or try my best to fix it so that i like it and i guess for this piece i did have that kind of panic moment you can see me i was trying to scrub away at the page a little bit that i don't really like how his face actually turns out i think it's the nose positioning and the rest of the like the jaw and the mouth but i think i should have done his face at least at the very beginning when I was doing his hair because I don't really, I don't know, something about it just bothers me a little bit but for the most part the overall piece is done and I really like it. I kind of want to go back and add gouache and add a little bit of those dusk, dust particles to everything just because I want to make it look a little bit more shiny and cute but I think, yeah, I think that's it and I personally really like this piece. I definitely think that if I did it with gouache, I might have disliked it a little bit more, even though it would have been good practice. But this just makes me realize that I really do miss using watercolors. So here are some of my older pieces. I'm gonna go back to that Pomu one, which is the one that's like green and yellow at the very beginning and potentially paint it with gouache or something. I wanna do something with it, even though I've released it from the block, I'll just like tape it back down and paint over it again. 
But yeah, these are from previous pieces and some of them are from previous sessions that I have videos on. So if you want to see any of them, uh, you can probably dig around on my channel and find them. So basically this is just on hot press paper from this paper pad. There's some loose leaf, I think, pieces from a different 5x7 watercolor paper that I've used in the past as well. But yeah, um, ooh, I don't really like this one either. <laughs> but yeah, this one's really cute, this one's really cute, and I like my Reimu one and my Topaz one. I think Ayaka turned out pretty cute too. But I think that's it for today's video. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday, and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!